Greetings from Calvary Lutheran Church. You are invincible. If only that were true. I'd just love to have skin of steel and superpowers coursing through my veins. Then I could leap over tall buildings with one leap and run faster than a speeding bullet. How awesome that would be. I could face everything with no fear. All my enemies totally defeated because I had that superpower. If only that were true. But then I look at myself and see how often I'm so weak, so vulnerable, hardly invincible. Do you feel the same way? Yet the psalmist in the opening words of Psalm 91 says, One who lives in the shelter of the Most High will stay in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Basically with those words, the Lord is they're saying, the psalmist is there saying that you are invincible. Not because you're like a superhero trusting in your own superpower that you can do anything and face everything. But you put your trust in your almighty God as you rest in the shadow of his power, his almighty power. That's what makes you invincible. Oh, those who hold fast to the Lord in love. The Lord is there to deliver them. The psalmist says in verse 7 of Psalm 91, A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Look what he's saying there. All this danger may be all around you, but it will not come near you. The Lord is going to be there to deliver you, to have his guardian, guardian angels watch over and take care of you. And doesn't he promise that throughout the course of the Bible? Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. I will deliver you. But wait a minute, you might say. Haven't Christians suffered at the hands of the wicked throughout the centuries? Even today we look around us and see the righteous people, the children of God, suffering at the hand of the wicked. Well, yeah, they have. Didn't Paul give us a litany of things that he had to face as a servant of Christ. He talked about being shipwrecked, beaten, imprisoned, stoned, left for dead, facing the cold, facing the heat, in danger from Gentiles, Jews, and robbers. I mean, he had a whole litany of the things he had to suffer as a missionary of the Lord. Well, yeah, that's true, too. Well, then what's this invincibility that you're talking about. Why didn't the guardian angels protect Paul and take care of him and deliver him? Well, the guardian angels did. God did deliver, just not in the way that you are thinking. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 10, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And basically, Jesus is there saying is, remember the invincibility you have for your soul. In Christ Jesus, because of his perfect life and innocent death as your substitute, you have eternal life. You have forgiveness. You are redeemed. You are restored. You are a child of God. And the Apostle Paul knew that. As he looked at all that suffering he went through and had to go through, he rejoiced in his suffering, he said. Well, how do you find joy in suffering? Because he knew that none of that suffering could take him away from Jesus Christ, nor the eternal life he had in Jesus Christ. That nothing could snatch him from Christ's hand. That nothing in heaven above or on the earth below could separate him from the love that he had in Christ Jesus. And it's the same for you. We live in a sin-marred world. Trouble's going to be all around. We're going to face difficulties in this world. But God has his guardian angels there to watch over and take care of us. And we always, always have that glorious promise too. No one's going to snatch you from Christ's hand. He's always going to be there by your side. And one day he'll bring you to the glory of heaven where no trouble, no hardship. There'll be no reason for God to deliver you 
because there will only be joy and perfection forevermore. So, you are invincible, eternally. Where it matters the most, your soul. Rejoice in that, and know that when you do face trouble in this world, the Lord's guardian angels are going to be there. And we pray. Dear God, as we walk in the footsteps of Christ this Lenten time and always, teach us to live our lives in no fear of earthly danger, for we are yours and you are ours. As your beloved children, we know that you will always take care of us, and one day you will take us to be with you in heaven. Until then, have your guardian angels watch over us and protect us. Amen.